did have citizens in here, and there were a couple of things I didn't want to um, jam up the meeting. It'll, ju- it'll just be very briefly, but significantly, if, if that's permissible. Yeah. Um, Mr. Welch, could you extrapolate per, uh, briefly on the the Aquarion meeting that was here this morning, uh, particularly the graph that showed those extraordinarily high limits for new uh, new emerging threat? I and, didn't uh, happen to bring them with me, but be a, uh, we mm-hmm. met with Aquarian Water Company this morning, as we do. Uh, we have been doing approximately once a month, except during the Christmas holiday, uh, to explore the uh, PFC uh, contamination in various wells in, around the, the, uh, the system. Uh, there are two wells that are currently shut down, number, I believe it's number nine, or no, number six, uh, which in fact has uh, PFC contamination that's worrying the company, and uh, well number 14 for other reasons. Uh, they have some um, other types of contamination of the well that they're studying to see whether or not it's harmful to anyone. Uh, <clears throat> the, the problems we have are we don't know where the material is coming from. Uh, they discussed putting in a treatment plant, uh, which is uh, somewhere in the 6 to $7 million range to build. Um, and they, they went over the... Um, their plans to try to reduce the PFCs within the water system by building this treatment plant, which is currently undergoing appeals in Northampton. Uh, they, Northampton has approved it, but there is an abutter who is appealing the installation of the, of, the, uh, of the facility and the placement of the pipes. We also talked about well number 22 and what's going on with well number 22, and they're still working on trying to put together a test uh, pumping of the well which could be up to 1,350,000 gallons a day. Well, it's over a 17 or 20 day period, uh, so the test can be checked on. Um, they're still trying to formulate that and put it together, and we have structured uh, another meeting coming up in approximately 45 days uh, so that we can continue to explore those things. They are working on various things to try to uh, find out where the contamination is coming from. They have a number of and been working with DES in, in Concord, a number of private wells in Northampton and Hampton, uh, I believe there was 140 of them that they have sent letters to that are, they're requesting uh, give to give uh, uh, DES and Aquarion permission to, in fact, come and test the wells and, and record data on those wells so that they can put the picture together on what's happening in the general area of the the, uh, the pumping systems and wells that are, that are owned by Aquarian. Uh, they've only received less than 50 approvals. They would like to have the balance done, which is of no cost to anyone, but it will help us identify where contamination may be or may not be. So it'll centralize their, their task and centralize what they're doing. That is an important function, and they're going to send the town copies of uh, all of the locations that letters have been sent to, and we will uh, with the board's permission, uh, when we receive that information, send a letter, additional letters out to those people to see if they can't participate in the testing, uh, which costs them nothing, but in <coughs> fact may, may help the situation with Aquarion and the, and the drinking water wells. In a nutshell, that's kind of where we are. Um, they're working hard to try to identify problems and resolve them. Uh, they need the help of various people in the community for the testing and uh, they've asked us to give them a hand in that area. I think that's kind of a fair synopsis of what Thank you. Did. Thank you very much. Here's well 14. Uh, right next to the well number 6. Uh, uh, it's a <laughs> little distance away. A little distance away. But, but it's a general, general area. Northampton. It's All right, in Northampton. So Close yeah, and the other one. concern we have is it's going to be summer before we know it, and we don't have well 6. We don't have right. well 14 for whatever reason that is. And what's going to happen when we do need another well, whether they can get, there was a question as to whether or not they might be able to get well 22 up in testing before the summer season hits. It's going to depend upon a number of different variables that they have yet to approve with the state. Right. But then if not, we're looking at possibly turning wells back on that have these high levels of PFCs that no one knows anything about. And the EPA is saying it's not a big deal, and DES is, you know, helping Aquarian out. But Aquarian, as a private company, has led the raid. But there's only so much they can do, and it really needs to. Uh, I think Eversource might need to step in sometime soon, since they're a huge utility corporation, and 
it's going to cost six million dollars to clean the wells for the aquarian population never mind the rest of the seacoast and the rest of the state so i mean maybe it's time that they start getting on board i just talked to representative mesmer this afternoon and des and epa hasn't even asked aquarian for any of their test work so also that's pretty that, lame if you ask me also added uh, the aquarian indicated that uh, Without some satisfactory approvals, well number six will not go back on, and there may be severe restrictions in the summertime. That's a major production well. Uh, it needs to be back on to meet their quotas, uh, and there may be massive uh, problems if they don't put it on, but will result in uh, some curtailment of watering, particularly outdoor usage altogether. So we're looking to see what's going to happen with that and how they're going to try to structure that and what the result is going to be. Obviously, we have a nice rainy summer. We're not going to need an awful lot of outdoor watering, but uh, they're cautious. They're, they're not going to predict that, and um, they're concerned that uh, they, if we had the same situation we had a year and a half ago uh, with uh, one well being down, uh, we almost came to the point where we didn't have enough water to supply the three towns. That's a dangerous situation. Yeah, I would say this, and it, and it ties in, Mr. Chairman, and thank you. Thank you, Mr. Welch. Um, with the letter that we sent to uh, the Portsmouth City Council, and I, I hand-delivered that um, today to the Portsmouth City Council office, um, and, and uh, speaking with it, Carl uh, from Aquarion said today that uh, if this happened again, that there would be uh, restrictions on water use uh, in the summer. Uh, and Dr. Ballastaro had an attachment that uh, Mr. Gerald put together so uh, so uh, ably, uh, and it speaks specifically. And Portsmouth never responds to this, and this is their problem that they've created for us. This past summer, a public water supplier, Aquarian, had one of its major wells, Well 6, shut down to PFC contamination. The supplier provides drinking water to Hampton, Northampton, and Rye. The well that has been lost produced just over 65 million gallons per year. This is an overburdened well. Nearby, there were four other Aquarian wells, some bedrock, and remember that word bedrock, we're going to come back to it, that combined to pump an additional 200 million gallons per year. The Coakley landfill studies have clearly demonstrated that there is an intimate connection between overburden and bedrock groundwater. The combined draw from these wells is manifested in the USGS modeling study results. Further on in, in the uh, memo uh, from Mr. Ballastaro, Dr. Ballastaro, that Mark has put together, says the initial regulatory response to this request is that the Coakley landfill is not the source of PFCs that shut down the well. Mr. Ballastero further states, yet all of the groundwater data that exists argues against this simplistic conclusion. Dr. Ballastero, in interestingly enough, uh, was the professor to the head of the EPA that now leads the area when we, uh, when we met in Northampton. So we've talked about bedrock and then in the own the the Coakley landfill management uh, of migration OU2 from 1994 portions of that landfill lie directly on fractured bedrock so we've got a couple hundred million gallons right around that one well that uh, um, are at risk we've got fractured bedrock where contaminants are and uh, up at the Seacoast Cluster Cancer uh, Investigation Commission, at the last meeting, Department of Environmental Services wasn't there. Health and Human Services wasn't there. Coakley sent a uh, lobbyist, and uh, there was nobody from Aquarian, and there was nobody from Eversource. And uh, they need to be driven to the table, and they need to be driven uh, more uh, energetically uh, by this town that is, that is so uh, hugely at risk. Uh, for this situation, and I, I really don't know how uh, the Portsmouth City Council sleeps at night. There are two uh, pediatric cancer deaths. Uh, this is their problem that they cannot disprove. Uh, we have hundreds of millions of gallons of water at risk, and they act as though they don't even know us. Uh, so I commend uh, you, Mr. Chairman, uh, for your leadership on this, and, and Mr. Gerald and Mr. Welch in sending this letter over. Uh, and it, it signifies, in, in terms of this meeting today, that this uh, GAC, and this gravity-activated carbon remediation process, this, this process will cost $6 million for this town to eliminate uh, this threat. 
and uh, we're, we're dragging on it. Six million dollars. Uh, our discussions with Eversource and Aquarian this morning, and I didn't speak for the board, Mr. Chairman, but as if this is Portsmouth and Coakley's problem, then I would think the town of Hampton would make sure that Portsmouth pays for it, uh, and it shouldn't come out of Eversource or Aquarian uh, shareholder wealth. It shouldn't come out of Hampton taxpayers, and it shouldn't come out of Hampton ratepayers for Aquarian. When we looked at the graphs that were, were brought to the table today, and I would ask that they be posted online, all of that information, uh, without objection, Mr. Chairman, um, there are merging PFC or contaminants, and it was up, and I, I don't have them with me, unfortunately. Um, but it's over over 100, I believe. One of them is, yeah. Over 100, and that, that is in... Yeah. in yeah. yeah, and uh, these are new emerging contaminants, and the public doesn't know this, and uh, Portsmouth uh, isn't doing anything about it. And if you could just read that second page, I believe it is, um, Selectman. There's the limits. It shows it over 100. Yeah, there's something here that shows. I believe on that second page. Hold on. It's on the, it's on the bar graph. Oh, okay. Yeah, I got that, yeah. You got it. That second page, the next one over the third page. Fourth page, that right oh, there. Oh yeah, right here, over 120. They're up to 100, 140 uh, at that well. Is that what, what well is that? That's well six. Well six, which is our largest well, is now, and they're talking about making a what I call a cancer cocktail, and blending that, bringing that online to meet demand, and with those limits. And I would like Max to take a picture of that. Um, I have this one. They're they're talking about blending that. And they think that's a solution. So this is, uh, I think, Hampton's biggest challenge right now. Uh, and it goes to the, the heart of the issue with the attorney's letter uh, to Portsmouth with the attachment and Dr. Bellistero. And then finally, I just wanted to share that um, the Port Coakley Landfill Group and the Portsmouth City Council lets this, this rogue unit um, act this way. Um, they fought with a lobbyist about uh, right to know and don't want to disclose any information. They don't make any accounting for their money. They, they are unanswerable to anybody. There are children dying. We have almost 140 PFC, PFOA count with that, with that information. These are emerging contaminates, and, and this is actually an emergency and a dire uh, situation. We're not allowed to talk about it. And no one's allowed to talk about it. The governor has not been down here. And uh, I think this, this town, town manager, Mr. Chairman, uh, or you, needs to call the governor, and he needs to get down here. Uh, this is his state. This is his water supply. This is $200 million of revenue that comes out of this town, and he has done absolutely nothing on it, and he's remained silent on it. And I would, uh, without objection, uh, ask that uh, the town manager call up to the governor's office and have uh, him meet, perhaps with you, Mr. Chairman, Aquarian at Eversource. Uh, but when you look at that graph, it is hugely problematic. We have people stymieing right to know. We have dead children. Uh, and I, I just wanted to bring that up because it is the most exigent and most serious issue that this town is facing right now, or perhaps has faced in a long time, period. So thank you for the time on that, Mr. Chairman. It is very important, and I wanted to thank uh, Fred um, and Aquarian and Eversource for coming, and uh, the Selectman Barnes for really driving this. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Now, all of the graphs and stuff is on their website now? should be up on their website. It's and going to be up on our website. Okay, on our website, right. and, and we have a link to it. And should we have them in for a public meeting to explain the, the problems that could come up in the summer? We've asked them to do that immediately after the new board is in panel. Okay. It's because we, we don't have to do this twice. We need right. to do it once. Okay. Uh, and, and they've agreed to do that. Okay, good. <laughs>